All right, let's discuss replacing the fuel injector on a six liter power stroke diesel engine. Now, first things first, we're gonna have to remove some components here. First, we'll remove the day gas bottle, just two bolts on the top, a couple hoses on the top, as well as another hose down below it. We're gonna remove the entire air cleaner assembly. We'll remove the charge air cooler tubing here, get that out of our way. Then the thickum will be mounted right behind it. We'll get that out of the way and give us plenty of access to the valve cover. All right, now with the joy of film, we've decided to use an engine on the test stand here. A little easier to get the camera around so you can see the full experience here. I know this isn't quite real life, but uh, it it's, makes it much easier to display some of the tips we need to do here to replace this injector. So this engine is on a stand. You certainly don't need to remove the engine. You can do this in the truck, but let's go ahead. I've removed all the, the bolts for the valve cover. So we've pulled the valve cover up out of the way. Now we can see the high pressure oil manifold here underneath the valve cover. Number four injector is gonna be the one we wanna to service today. Well, first things first, let's pull out the dummy plug here as well as a standpipe. And so now to remove the dummy plug, I'm going to take my T60 Torx bit and work this out. Now this doesn't have to come out right now necessarily to replace the injector, but it's a good idea because of the rubber seals in here, we don't wanna have a high pressure leak later on. So we're gonna go ahead and install an updated dummy plug. I'm also going to remove the standpipe here. Now this could come out with the whole oil manifold, but it makes it a little easier to get that out. I'm gonna use my T55 to remove it. Now some of these come with an updated two-piece design, so if you're doing this in the truck, you might not have enough clearance to get this all the way out. And so these come as a two-piece design, and you'll see in here it could be actually separated. But we wanna make sure that we install a brand new one when we put this back together, because there's a couple sealing points in here we want to seal off so we don't have a high pressure oil leak when we're all done. Now we've got the dummy plug removed, the standpipe removed, we're gonna go ahead and remove some of these hold down bolts that hold the high pressure oil manifold in place. All right, now let's lift this oil manifold off of the engine here. Now it's very important to do it evenly. Don't just pull up on one side versus the other and get them equally lifted off here. Now you have to be aware there's gonna be a little bit of oil running out. You can see some oil draining off here. But notice these fittings on the top is where it connects to the fuel injectors. So if we pick up on one side and not the other, we're gonna cock this in there and run the risk of damaging the injectors. So it's very important that we lift this up equally on both sides. Now that we've got our high pressure oil manifold out of the way, let's go ahead and press the clip here and release the electrical connector from the engine harness to the injector itself. Now the injector itself is clipped into the cylinder head. And so we're gonna use a special tool to remove this clip. Now, as you see, it's nothing more than kind of a circle-shaped object here with a beveled edge. Now we're gonna slide that over the clip here. We have to get it lined up properly, and we're gonna give it a little bit of pressure here, and what that's gonna do is pinch the tabs and release the harness from the cylinder head here. Now, a lot of times technicians may just take a hammer or a screwdriver and pop it through, but you're gonna damage the core and, and kill this connector if you do that. So we wanna be careful to use the proper tool when installing this. Again, you can see how it just slides over the tabs there and gently presses those tabs in to release it. Now that's done, let's go ahead and remove the hold down bolt. All right, now we're ready to remove the hold down bolt. But we're gonna use an extended shank T40 socket here. Now the temptation for most technicians is to grab their, their typical T40 and use that on here. But you'll notice it's hard to get straight on the bolt and what happens is it'll crack off the solenoid on the injector. And so we're gonna use our extended version here which is much slimmer and we can get a straight shot on it and we certainly won't damage the old injector as we take it off and of course we don't want to damage our new injector when we put it back together. So use an extended shank T40 Torx bit to get the hold down bolt out of here.
once we've got it loosened up, we're going to remove the hole down, the bolt, and the injector all together. They should all come up in one piece. And now you'll notice an alignment slot there, and our hole down has a tab that we'll put into place with our new injector. Now also, as we get the old injector out, we want to make sure that the copper washer comes up with it. This seals it off at the bottom of the cylinder head against a compression type leak. And similar to double gasketing an oil filter assembly, we don't want to double gasket one of these. So make sure that the old copper washer comes up with the old injector. Now also, while we've got this injector out, one thing we want to look for is contamination here. This is where the fuel enters into the fuel injector and it's got a little screen here. We want to make sure there's no debris or contamination on this. This one really looks pretty clean. So, that being said, we're going to clean out the hole a little bit. Then we're going to take some shop air and blow it in the, the hole for the hole down here. Now remember, this is underneath the valve cover, so there's a lot of engine oil down in here. This is a blind hole, and so if that hole gets full of oil, and now we go to torque this bolt down, it's going to cause some torquing issues and not seal the injector properly. So we need to make sure that all the oil is out of there. All right, so we've cleaned out our passageway where the new injector is going to go. Just use a, a clean rag and a screwdriver. Now I'll take a little shop air to that hole. We're going to blow that oil out. Good idea to cover this up because you don't want oil flying all over the place. And remember, you're going to be doing this in the truck with a lot less room. So we're going to make sure that all the oil is out of there. And now it's time to grab our new injector With our new injector, we want to make sure that it's got a protective seal on it to keep that tip good and clean. And notice we've got new O-rings on here and it's got a new copper washer. Now we can take some engine oil and lubricate these O-rings. We want to make sure that they're good and lubricated before we install this. We don't want to roll them or cut them as we're installing our new injector. So really we can lubricate this body here I'm going to grab our hole down and I'm going to line that up with that tab and we're going to have to slide the whole assembly in here together. We'll get it kind of lined up. We'll slide it in place there, get it started. Then remember, I'm going to take my extended shank T40 and gently run this down into the hole. Now we don't want to force it or use excessive force on this. I mean, really it slides down quite nicely here. I'm just using a quarter inch ratchet to draw this down. And we'll get it snugged up there. Next thing we want to do is take our electrical connector and slide it through the cylinder head here now. Now this is going to be a one-way fit. We want this flat part towards the top. And so we'll slide it into the hole here and we need to make sure it's clicked and locked into place. One thing I've seen a lot of technicians do is they don't get that locked into place. They slide it up there, and so now when they go to make their electrical connection later, it forces us back through. Now if this is in the truck and you've already put the valve cover on, that turns into be quite a fishing expedition to try and get that back up through here, and quite often it's a losing proposition. You're gonna pull it back apart. So make sure that you get this drawn up there properly and snapped into place. Well, now I'm gonna switch out my quarter inch ratchet for a torque wrench. I need to torque this down to 26 foot pounds. It's very important that we get the proper amount of pressure down holding that, that washer down at the bottom to seal it off from compression, as well as make sure that our O-rings land in the, in the proper place. Now I've traded off my ratchet for a digital torque wrench. I've got it set for 26 foot-pounds and I'm going to go ahead and torque this hold down bolt, get it 26 foot-pounds. There, we're all set with that. Now I want to take a little bit of oil as well and lubricate the top of this injector here. There's a couple O-rings in there that's going to seal against the, the high pressure manifold and so we want to make sure that that is good and lubricated before we install our high pressure manifold. Now that I'm confident I've got that lubricated, I can take the high pressure manifold and it's giving me a little bit more oil here <laughs> to use in the lubrication process. Now we see that these fittings right here are going to set down inside of these 
injectors. So we need to carefully install this and set it down there. Never force this to go in there. We're going to line this up gently, make sure it's on all four of them, and then work it down in until it pops in properly. Now, we should never have to pound this in. We should never have to use the bolts to draw this in. If you do that, you run the risk of cracking the top of the injector. Now that this is in place, we install our hold down bolts. We're going to install our new dummy plug, as well as the updated two-piece standpipe. Put the valve cover on, and this thing should be ready to run again. Now back to the truck. We've got everything reassembled here. It's very important that because we've had an issue with the fuel injectors, we need to replace the oil filter. Good idea to replace the oil as well. Make sure you use a good quality filter as well as Ford approved oil. Now because we've got oil going through these high pressure oil system injectors, it's very important to have clean oil. That's, that's crucial to the longevity of a repair here. So after the repair, we're going to replace the oil filter, change the oil, as well as replace the fuel filter. Now there's one fuel filter up here on top of the engine. There's also another fuel filter on the frame rail right below the driver's seat underneath the truck. Not a bad idea to replace that one as well. That one's typically overlooked. Also, it's a good idea to update the fuel pressure regulator. So it's referred to as the Blue Spring Update. Now, we'll show in a different video that you can take a look at and you'll see the procedure on that. What that's gonna do is up the fuel pressure about 12 to 15 PSI. That extra pressure is also gonna help ensure the longevity of the injectors. Give it just a little bit better uh, pressure, help cushion those injectors, keep them running longer. Also, it's a good idea to make sure that your FICM is working properly as well. And it's important that we get 48 volts going to these injectors, and so if you have anything less than that, it's a good idea to repair your FICM. You can also find one of our videos on repairing the FICM. So, we've replaced both the filters here, we've replaced the filter down on the frame rail, got clean oil in it. Now we need to bleed the system. We have that high pressure rail out. We need to make sure all the air is out of it. So let's go over to the passenger side of the vehicle and let me show you a trick on bleeding the oil system. All right, now let's discuss bleeding the air out of the high pressure oil system. Now there's a, a wire right here and this is a direct feed to the, the starter. So let's pinch the connector, disconnect the wire, and now the wire that's closest to the battery is gonna be the one that goes directly to the starter solenoid. You'll see the, the wire inside of there. Now I'm gonna to go to the battery positive post here, work that out of my way, and there's a couple studs sticking out here. So I'm gonna simply take this and touch it to the stud and crank the engine over, about 30 seconds at a time. Now why can I do this with a key on? I don't want the truck to start. So if I was doing this inside the cab with the key, we have the potential of the truck starting. I'd rather just crank it over, build some oil pressure, get all the air out of it right now before we attempt to start the truck. So I'm gonna take my cable, touch it to a lead, and let the truck crank. Now we'll let it crank for a while. We'll let it sit and cool for a little bit as well. We want to let the starter cool down. We don't want to burn up any starter now. But we'll do this approximately five different times. And so again, I'll let the truck crank, let it rest, crank it again, all just trying to, to bleed the air out of the high pressure oil system. All right, now that we hopefully have the high pressure oil system bled out, we're gonna go back in the truck and we're gonna cycle the key a couple times as well. What this is gonna do is cycle the low pressure fuel pump and prime the bowl where the filter housing is. And so I'm gonna just turn the key on for a couple seconds, let the, the lift pump run. It's also cycling the injectors now a little bit. And so we'll let that sit for a couple seconds, turn the key off, let it rest for about 10, 15 seconds and we'll cycle the key again. We wanna cycle the injectors. We're letting that low pressure pump run, hopefully getting fuel up into the bowl. Now, when we're ready to start, we'll crank the truck and see if it fires up. It still might require a little bit of cranking yet, or it might actually start up. One thing we do not wanna do is fire it up and give it any sort of engine RPMs. I know a lot of guys will fire it up 
and run at about 2,500, three grand in order to help bleed any more air out of it. But think of it when you've done a plumbing project at home and now you've got air in the system and how much it shakes those pipes and the valves and everything in there. That's what's going on in the system if there's any air in it. And there's a couple screens in there by the oil pressure regulator is one of them. And we don't want to burst that screen at all with that air pressure going through there. So let's start the truck and let it idle for about a minute and then we'll take it for a test drive and see if we've done our job properly. So let's go ahead and try and crank this thing up and see if it starts. Good deal, it started. It's run on all eight cylinders at the moment, or it certainly feels smooth. Not a bad idea to go in, make sure there are no trouble codes set when we were doing the job. Let's clear the memory out. But let's let it sit here and idle for a little bit. And uh, we'll double check the oil level, take it for a test drive, and then our job is done. We've just shown you the proper way to replace a fuel injector in a Ford six liter power stroke engine.